What's happening, YouTubers? It's your boy CB, and we are back for my favorite segment on the channel, Huddle Watch Alongs with Recruits. For you fans of DBs, for you fans of ball hawks, and just absolute versatility, I'd say the guy we have on today is more so an athlete than a DB, excels on both sides of the football, has incredible range, smoothness, great hands, and he is one of the top athletes in the 2026 class. Already committed to USC, but you don't want to hear from me. You want to hear from the superstar himself. So without further ado, three-star DB in the 2026 class and USC commit, Madden Ryordan. How's it going, bro? What's going on? What's going on? It, I know it's hard, but it's Reardon. Like, Reardon. Re Reardon? Yeah, everybody messes this up. Mess it up. It's all right. Hey, don't. Hey, I got a last name. My, my last name is Carmona. So I, I feel you because nobody gets my net, my last name right, especially when they see me. They yeah. add letters to it. They add <laughs> syllables to it. Like, bro, I just be like, I'm Corey. Just call it. Just say Corey because my, my last name gets butchered. And then my first name gets butchered, too, because it has an E in it. I yeah. will send professional emails, bro, that have my name spelled out and they reply like k-o-r-y like i it's so trust me i feel the i feel the name struggle yeah it was bad for me like football camps that was Ooh. Bad or... what's the worst it's ever been said please don't say it was mine no 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 everyone says it like yours maybe like rorden like they just don't, <laughs> they don't see they're like... just like we're going we're just yeah. gonna combine all this into one name yeah it, it's it's not, it's not that big of a deal, though. So beforehand, we talked a little bit about it. But before we get into the film, I want to ask, how's this offseason been for you? I, obviously, we'll get into the, the, the commit, you committing early later. But other than committing, how's this offseason been seven on seven, staying in shape and obviously trying to balance recruiting with all of that? I mean, it's been really good. Just overall, just trying to put on weight right now, you know, trying to lead my team. I mean, progress more as a leader, you know. But spring and seven on seven has gone great, you know, playing both sides of the ball. So I say it's been great. Was it different for you this year in seven on seven when now you're you're you got a little bit of a target on you and people oh. are looking at you like, ooh, I could I could probably get an offer if I could get one on him. Yeah. People yeah, it's been a lot different. I mean, just like the local not the, the local, you know, in the valley where we're at, they might know me, but like it's you got to dominate. So, it's so business. one of the things I love about some of the things you guys get to do during the off season is some of these camps, whether it's the Under Armour camps or rival camps or how much do you love getting to go to some of those camps where you're competing against the other, you know, top flight athletes in, in, in LA? Well, this year I didn't really get to go to the camps cause I was dealing with some injuries, but my, Going into my sophomore year, I did all the UA and all that and the rivals. I did rivals this year, but I just came back from an injury. So I wasn't going 100%. But I, I love it. I mean, I believe SoCal has the best athletes, best receivers, and DBs, I would say. We might be lacking O line, D line, obviously. The South and Florida has that. But competing against the best receivers at 25 and 26 is always fun, you know? How much of seven on seven do you do you feel like helps you hone that technique because you're going against these top athletes, these top receivers and DBs because you're someone who plays both sides of the ball? Yeah. Well, it's just reps, you know, reps and reps and reps, just knowing what works, what works for you, you know, against different receivers. I mean, you're going to see most of the receivers in the season, you know, if you're playing seven on seven local. So knowing what they like to do or how they get off press, how they use their eyes or hands i mean that's really what i would use it for i love that a lot of people will think like you can you can develop such bad tendencies with seven on seven but like you said it's also just good reps and it's also yeah. because you play both sides of the football on on offense you're having to get open and present yourself to your quarterback faster he's got to get the ball out of his hands yeah. on defense it, it's even I, I always think corner is the hardest position to play period on 707 it's even harder i feel like yeah so i feel like those are just good quality reps like you said against receivers you're gonna see so you're starting to notice oh he got tendencies or, or yeah when he up inside he's definitely only running these few routes i've been playing this dude all spring i i know what this is like when it comes game time yeah 100 percent. so for you as someone who committed relatively early in your process 
What was that that decision like? What went into that? What was it about USC and Coach Riley that almost instantly you were like, you know what, man, this is home? I mean, I grew up being a USC fan, so my family's huge USC fans, so this has always been a dream for me. You know, um, they Coach Dante, he's actually a Georgia now. He offered me midway through the season and Coach Riley, and I think two or three weeks later, I knew where I wanted to go. I knew USC was home, so I committed, and they have not shown me nothing but love the past year or whatever. So, I mean, I love it. Do you remember your very first interaction with Coach Riley? Oh, yeah. It was the Washington-USC uh, game. So we went, and one of like the assistants came up to me, and he was like, oh, Coach Riley wants to see you in the office. And I was supposed to commit next week. And we talked, whatever. He's taller than you think. He's like six foot two. I thought he was like really. Yeah, he's he's tall. I was like, damn, okay. I'm, I'm like, <laughs> like underneath him, you know. And he has that deep accent, you know. So, I mean, it was surreal, really, just talking to him, you know, knowing that I wanted to commit, you know. He knew. So, I mean, the, I made it official the next week. I wasn't even supposed to be that early, but I knew talking to him and what he wanted and what he wanted for that twenty six class. I know I want to be a part of it. And as someone who grew up a fan of the Trojans, as someone who grew up looking at that uniform, having the dream that one day I'll, I'm going to put on that one, how was that day for you? Not just for you, but for your family as well, being able to – because I'm sure they heard you over the years. There's a there's an yeah. awesome picture of you when you're a kid playing, I believe it's seven-on-seven seven or flag football, mm -hmm. and, and your team was the Trojans at the time. There's another picture of you in the stands as a kid with a jersey yeah. what was that day like for you and your family obviously they get to see you accomplish something that i'm sure you've been talking about since you were five years old yeah i mean i just remember like being like in the third or fourth grade you know always what do you want to be when you grow up always writing about playing for usc you know so that day november 5th was pretty crazy pretty hectic you know family friends you know teammates always reaching out you know they all knew this is my dream so it was pretty much just a crazy experience. And there's a coach I I'd like to point out. There's a crazy stat I saw, and I had to share this. I had to save this so I could share it. USC's DB coach, Doug Belk, is known for not just developing, but being yeah. the voice behind some of the best DBs we have seen at the college level and at the pros. Mm -hmm. Let me list off just a few of these guys real quick. Mika Fitzpatrick, Marlon Humphrey, Eddie Jackson, Cyrus Jones, Landon Collins. When you hear those names, what does that do for you, the, the, the young DB who's looking at the guy who's going to be his coach for the next three to four years? I mean, you, could get, you get excited, you know. I mean, him and Coach Lynn, they both have DC NFL experience, so you, you can be anything but excited, you know, about all this experience that they have. What's that relationship been like building with him since he's been there? I mean, Coach Lynn and Coach Belk. I mean, Coach Lynn, we had – we built a relationship before, me and Coach Belk. I mean, it's been great. He's smart. I mean, he's the coolest dude you ever meet, you know. He's still – he's awesome. He's got the NFL experience. And then me and Coach Belk really at practices over spring, going to the USC practices, you know, just going over some film, going over their practices and what they like to run. Just a cool dude, you know, someone you could talk to and someone who's going to get you better and, like, get you to the next level. So what is the secret, Madden, to the SoCal football player? You guys have such a calm demeanor about y'all. You know, it it really is the cliche of, you know, when you think of a SoCal person, you think calm, relaxed, reserved. But when the helmet goes on and the lights go on, y'all are different. What what goes into that SoCal mindset where it's cool on the outside, but there's a fire beneath that? I would say it's just all the competition we have. I mean, we compete in practice. Like, all of my best friends that, like, in the football world, I'm going against that Bosco. You know, we all play seven on seven together. We all played against each other. So it's just that, like, competition, I feel like, just gets us ready for the real game. And, like, I feel like that's what gets us going. It's that iron sharpens iron mentality. But it's so interesting to see that cool, calm, and collected. And then for, the, for those of y'all going, what are you talking about? Well, when you watch his film, 
not as you, you can see, there's a there's a different type of tenacity on the football field. So I got to ask, as someone who does a little bit of everything, corner, <laughs> safety, receiver, do you have a preferred favorite? Uh, I think I like corner more, but I'm probably going to play more safety this year just because of our personnel and what we have. But I probably going to play safety in college. They haven't we haven't really had that discussion yet, but they know I play anywhere. So. So on this first play here, the first thing I noticed is this is a young man that studies his film. You broke on this like you knew like you was in the huddle with him when they called this play. How much of this is film study? Uh, to be honest, it wasn't film. It, it ran this play two times. I mean, one time in the game and they got me on it. So once I saw that tight end or wing, whatever, go out, I knew it was out for number one. So just go ahead and jump it. When. All right. So that's that's you processing the game as it's happening. A question I always like to ask is when the game slowed down for you, the way you just described that tells me when this play happened the first time you Iron Man like processed in your head. OK, the next time they come out in this formation. Yeah, I know what's I like happening. to do that. When do you feel like that became a uh, an asset to you where the game is kind of moving just that half a second slower for you? Um, I've always been a very smart player, you know, but I would say probably eighth grade. You know, I played with the OC Buckeyes, which is one of the best youth teams in the country, you know. So just having that coaching, just having that like coaching around you, you know, I feel like just helps you understand the game more. And then here at corner, you look so comfortable on an island. Is that is that something from the time you were young? You always were like, look, leave me a man. Put me on an island. I'll take care of it. Uh, Yeah, I mean, I I feel very comfortable right there. Red zone, you know, so I can sit on routes a little bit more. So, What is the key for young corners listening? Because – you hear a lot of a lot of times when guys are called ball hawks, you assume, oh, they just jump every route. But it, it's a calculated risk you take. What is the key to knowing you can take that calculated risk? Like you said, in the red zone here, but you make a smart, calculated move, undercutting this and getting the interception. I mean, yeah, just knowing down the distance, scenario, quarterback, receiver. I feel like knowing your own speed, knowing your own change of direction. It goes, it's a lot of everything, you know, but – Football, you just got to be a playmaker. Just go make plays. Go have fun. I feel like that's the biggest thing. Just fly around. Then here we see you at safety here. How much do you like? I know you say you you do love playing corner, but then getting to have the space to roam around back there, allowing you to play on your instincts a little bit more. How much fun is that for you as well? I mean, that's super fun. You know, just flying <laughs> around, you know, trying to make plays, get the ball out, get turnovers. So, I mean, right there, I was in the middle third. I just went to go make a play. I knew they liked that receiver, and I saw my corner was pressed. So I know they, they like to go vertical. So I was, I kind of just flew over there. And then you turn into a receiver with the ball in your hands again. Yeah, I would have scored if I got a block. Just ran right past them. <laughs> so what came first as a young football player? Was it offense first or was it defense first? It was probably offense, I would say. We, really? we ran a wing tee, so I played tight end, just running corner routes, just pretty much. I always had natural hands, you know, just catching with my dad growing up. So I would probably say offense, but eighth grade, probably seventh grade, I trained DB a lot more, I would say, and just got more comfortable being DB. What was it about DB that you felt like, even before you were comfortable in it, you you kind of had – Clearly an idea in the back of your mind that, hey, this this may be my my fit. What was it about DB that intrigued you so much? I really don't know what, like, that switches, <laughs> but, like, I just love defense way more, you know, just <laughs> coming downhill, you know, making plays on the ball. Is it – is it a little annoying as a DB that that goes under the radar for your game? Like, so we, when you look at someone like you, you would think ball hawk, right? Yeah. He's a receiver that's playing DB, which is not necessarily the case. But when you when you see the numbers, you go, oh, he's probably a finesse DB. He's a ball hawk. Mm -hmm. But we will see here, 
you play the run just as aggressively as you play the pass. You're not afraid to get your nose dirty. We saw in a clip earlier making a play and ca causing a fumble. Do you feel like yeah. that side of your game goes unnoticed because of the ball skills? I'll say definitely. I mean, I had three forced fumbles last year. I mean, you could just ask my teammates in practice. They hate it, but I'm punching, <laughs> I'm punching their hands. I'm punching at the ball every single play. You know, I feel like that just gets you ready for the game. That really helped me last year, just punching the ball out and just being aggressive and knowing, like, you got to go low sometimes. I mean, I'm not the biggest guy. Just knowing where to hit them, how to hit them, and that's pretty much it. If, do you Was the physical part of the game always something that you enjoyed? Because like you said, not the biggest guy, but you – you get your nose dirty. There's no hesitation in your step. Foot's in the ground, and you're attacking. Is that something that's always um, been a part of your game, even back there in Little League? Not Pop Warner. I was so scared to tackle on Pop Warner. <laughs> I, I got we all want to score when we're young. That's why. Yeah, I got to eighth grade, and I kind of just had to be aggressive because the kids are bigger than me. And I, if I'm not aggressive, they're going to run through me, you know. I mean, I remember um, eighth grade, we played against – uh, Jordan Davidson, who's committed to Oregon now, modern day running back, Bad and running back, he was yeah. bigger than everybody. I remember <laughs> I just got to go, just you can't stop, like, you just got to take his legs out. I mean, Nasir Wyatt, who's also a modern day, he's committed to Oregon, he's, a, he's an edge rusher now, but he played running back eighth grade. And I remember he was bigger than everybody, you just you just got to go. I mean, no hesitation, or anything. So, I was gonna ask you about that. Playing at Sierra, playing top flight competition, and not just on Fridays, but in practice, Monday through Thursday as well. Mm -hmm. What's that competitive atmosphere like? What are those practices like, those one-on-one -on -one sessions? I mean, last year when we had uh, Xavier Jordan, who's at USC, Quasi Gilmer, who's at UCLA, and all these other receivers, that was a lot of fun, you know, just we did a lot of compete drills, just like seven on seven, like live or live 11 on 11, which is really fun. The one on ones always got pretty fun and competitive. So just doing that, going day in, day in, like day out, like with all these receivers, I feel like just gets you better. And I would obviously, I would imagine come Friday after y'all done battled each other all week, you don't yeah. care who's on the other side. Y'all are just excited that it's somebody else. Like the receivers yeah. are just like, bro. If it ain't 23, put him in front of me. Like, I don't yeah. I don't care at this point. I'm tired of getting the ball hit out of my hands. Even when I catch it, he's trying yeah. to strip it. Like, they probably can't wait for Friday and the same for you. Yeah, 100%. Now, how is that mindset going to be a bit different this year? Because like you said at the start of this, now you're a leader in the locker room. You know, now mm -hmm. someone's looking up to you. There's there's a young DB like, all right, when he done with 23, I'm going to wear 23 like him because I'm going to try to go to USC too. What yeah. is that mind shift like now that now you're uh, you're almost like a veteran in the locker room at this point? Well, I mean, I am. I've been I've started all three years, so I know a lot of the you're, young you're DBs. You're a vet now. Yeah, I know a lot of the young DBs and receivers are really looking up to me. I mean, I love being a leader for them and just talking through the play or anything they need. But a lot of expectations, which I'm ready for, but that's pretty much it. Is that how – for someone who started early as a freshman at this level, how much do you feel like that that being thrown in the fire early at a top level helped you become the DB you are now? Not not just a DB, mm. the, the overall football player. Because like you said, you played both sides of the ball. How much do you feel like that helped your development mentally as well as physically getting those early reps? I feel like it just built my confidence, to be honest, like knowing the coaches trusted me to put me in there. I mean, I was like 136. Like, I was very <laughs> light. I was like very light. But I knew how to use my weight. I know how to use my body. So I made a bunch of plays, you know, throughout the game. You know, I remember my first start uh, was against Mission Viejo, and they had Mikey Matthews, who I don't know if you know, but he's at Cal now. But he was one of the best receivers in California. He was a four-star monster dude i remember just <laughs> having to roll down against him and we put in a new coverage it was more of like a match and they wanted me to match the slot fade with him which they didn't run but like i knew that was gonna be a beast if he actually ran it but I, just having that confidence you know knowing that the coaches trust you to put you in do you remember that first game where 
obviously you have the confidence in yourself. You've all, you have to have confidence in yourself. But do you remember that game where it really clicked for you where you were like, hold on, like I belong here. I'm not just trying to compete. Like mm -hmm. I'm young, but I do belong on this football field with these guys. Uh, this was my, my freshman year, which was like week six. It was homecoming. And I – That's a good uh, one to figure it out. Yeah. I mean, watching film, I knew that I could jump a lot of these routes. And, like, I knew, like, if they do that, I'm jumping this and going. So they did a bunch of RPOs. And I knew if, if that guy pulls or whatever, it's, it's that route. And I had, like, four PBUs. I had a pick that got called back. And it had a couple key tackles and like a couple key stops on third or fourth down, which was probably one of my best games in my high school career. But just knowing that as a freshman, like going against these good receivers or whatever, because Fishermont had some solid senior receivers and just knowing that I could trust my game plan and trust what I see out there, you know, that's pretty much it. It's, I always love asking that question because it's, I think we, we all get told, right, varsity is so much faster when you get there. The speed, the speed of the game is faster. But until you're out there, you really don't understand how much faster it is. So it's cool to see when that light bulb goes off and when it when you have that moment where it's like, I, I may be a freshman, but the only thing different between me and this dude is he's a junior. I, I now belong on this field, too. Ain't no mm -hmm. question. Ain't no. I'm just trying to survive. I'm. I just don't, I'm just, like you said, I'm just 136. Just wait till I put the weight on, but I, I still belong here. Something else I always have to ask before I let you go, because a lot of times on the other side, people in the comments, me as well, sometimes people don't understand what goes into y'all's journey. Yeah. The, the sacrifices that have to be made, the missed birthday parties, the missed outings with your friends. You know, like you said, recovering from, from injuries, obviously, means that you're not you're missing things i'm sure you've missed countless amounts of things yeah but it's because you have a dream and a goal in mind on those days when it's hard bro when when you done ran and had to lift you sore tired exhausted couldn't sleep the night before but you still got to get up still got to put in the work what is it that keeps you going what is that why that no matter how bad it is when you wake up you're gonna keep grinding uh i'll probably just Say like my for my teammates, I would probably say I know that they rely on me. They want me there. I rely on them. You know, just mentally, physically, everything. I mean, I'm with them. I mean, from six thirty to like twelve thirty. You know, lift, <laughs> uh, film or whatever. So just knowing that my teammates rely on me and they need me there and the coaches need me there. That's pretty much it. That's that is the answer you want from a leader. Like I don't. <laughs> Uh, if a USC coach is watching this, that that is the answer you want from your leader because we all need that why. And I love that yeah. you, your first thing was, well, I'm I'm accountable to the person next to me. I'm accountable to the person behind me. I'm accountable to my coaches, to my teammates. I love that no matter how the how hard the day gets or how hard the day the previous day was, you're always in your mind thinking, but I'm still held accountable by everybody around me. Like you said at the beginning of this, you're a leader. So if you slack, someone else thinks it's okay to that yeah. next one who's behind you going, I'm just wearing like 44 now, but as soon as he graduates, I'm taking his Jersey. <laughs> he's watching every move you make. So uh, no, when he knows like, man, he banged up and he's still, he's still at the front of every sprint. I know he tired and he's still at the front. He's still doing a couple extra reps on every lift that trickles down. Like that's why Sierra has the dynasty it has. And that's why it's going to continue to have it. Because yeah. there's someone looking at you, seeing what you do. He's just going to follow in your footsteps. 100%. So what I love, look, bro, I cannot wait for this season coming up, especially because you said you're going to play more safety, which I know you said you want to play more corner, but that range, yeah. I'm excited to see more safety on it. So after this season, when you have a whole nother tape worth of highlights and interceptions, we're going to have you back on so we can look at that tape and we can be like, look, 10 interceptions. Do you have an interception goal for this year? Uh, Yeah, it's, it's seven. It's 10 turnovers in total, set six or seven interceptions and three or four or four fumbles. Let's go. So you're going to hit that goal. And yeah. then when we come back on next year, we're going to be like, look, told you we was going to hit that goal. 10 <laughs> turnovers. How much Are you going to play just as much offense this year as well? Uh, We'll see. I'm, I'm going to play way more than last year, 100%. I only had like one catch last year, but I was a little – Banged up, my knee was a little bit bugging me, so I didn't 
one and we had like two four star yeah. receivers and, <laughs> so they didn't really need me but this year i have the confidence and i know my team needs me so i'm gonna I'm be out there 100 percent Let's look. Let's get ten touchdowns and ten turnovers. That's the goal for this year. Ten gotcha. and ten. Quarterback, hit him up on the fade. Look, <laughs> I wish you nothing but health this year. Stay healthy. I hope you guys run the table, go undefeated, get a ring. I know that's the ultimate goal. I yeah. cannot wait to see how it plays out. I know the ones in the comments, USC <laughs> fans and other fans of schools that are hoping that they can flip you. Cannot wait to see what this year is like. Again, I wish you nothing but good health and a successful year. But before you go, let everybody know where they can follow you. And I'll link those down in the description so that you guys can follow him all year. Because I know somebody going to DM me and say, how can I watch his games? So I'm going to put his huddle down there, too, so that you can keep up with him during this year. Uh, well, my at is the same for every single social media. It's Madden Reardy. It's just my last name, just without the A-N, replaced with a Y. Just Madden Reardy. It's everywhere. My uh, Twitter and Insta is the same. And I'm linking all those down. All you got to do is click him. You'll go straight to his socials. Follow him. Do not wait until he gets four or five pick sixes in the year. <laughs> and you start DMing me like, is that the dude from USC? What's his Twitter? Go follow him right now. Click off of this and go follow bro right now. Madden, thank you so much for coming on. Again, I wish you nothing but success this year. And uh, fight on. Fight on. Thank you. Hey, we out.